Okay, good morning. Welcome to lecture four today, which will complete the stereochemical models we discussed last time on carbonyl additions, and then we will move into cuprate chemistry. Now let, let me just very briefly recall what we started last lecture on the cram chelate model, which is a tool to understand carbonyl additions to compounds which have an alpha chiral center. And the one case we looked at so far have been compounds which contain in the alpha chiral center a substituent which is able to chelate with a organometallic compound such as a Grignard compound. And so if we add an organometallic compound, then this model would predict that out of the two diastereomers, one is formed preferentially and if we draw this if we draw the this in a sawhorse projection you should be able to make a educated guess which one of the diastereomers should preferentially form in that the magnesium is chelating our compound in this way here and then a nucleophile can attack from the top side or from the bottom side of uh, this from this conformation and then the differentiation is that we have a large substituent and a small substituent and therefore the attack from this side should be favored over attacking from here which then should result preferentially in this product. And if I redraw this, then this should be the prefer preferred diastereomer, which we will call the cram chelate product. And this would be preferred in the other diastereomer possible here. would be the minor product uh, according to the model and this is indeed in agreement with the experimental evidence we have. Now a little bit later I will draw something one more formula one more confirmation below here I will continue writing over there on the board 
but maybe you would like to leave a small space here so that you can add another formula later on. So let's now look at the situation when we do not have a chelating substituent. Take in this example where our alpha chiral center contains a hydrogen, a methyl group, and a phenyl group. And so what started out here to analyze that situation that again, if you add nucleophiles such as, such as a Grignard, Again, you have two possibilities. of products to form. And in this case, The experimental evidence was, again, that this co compound is the major diastereomer being formed. And this one would be the minor. And the way this was analyzed, which led to the so-called CRAM model, was that the analysis started out to analyze this zero center based on steric size of the groups being present here. And so if you differentiate or if you look at this, then you would say the hydrogen is the smallest substituent. The methyl group would be the medium substituent, although we discussed very briefly yesterday in the tutorial that this, in comparison to a phenyl group, which would be depicted as the large substituent here, this does not always have to be the case. Phenyl groups sometimes are smaller due to their flat pipe surface as they appear. But nevertheless, by and large, this uh, steric ordering is useful or is, is reasonable. And then what was done is that it was argued that the phenyl group as the large substituent should be opposite, should be furthest away from the carbonyl group here to avoid steric repulsion. And this would leave then, if I draw this correctly, the methyl group over here and the smallest substituent would go, in, would go in here. And now having this confirmation, which again entirely is based on the idea that carbonyl and the largest substituent should avoid each other, if this confirmation is now the reactive confirmation, then again we have the possibility to attack either from the top phase, which would be on the face of that methyl substituent, or we would have the opportunity to attack from below, which then would come over the side of the small substituent. And consequently, based on steric arguments, it was said that the 
attack from below. <coughs> Should be the preferred one. Which then should lead to this, uh, should lead to this diastereomer here. And if I redraw this, in the way that I'm placing phenyl and nucleophile now anti to each other, you should come to the conclusion that this is indeed the diastereomer uh, being formed here, that this is identical to this representation. 